Let's take a look at our tail of the tape as we get set for our opening matchup. This, the first of our triple header. You see that the height advantage in favor of German and Cajas and the reach in favor of the champion as well. Martinez undefeated. Obviously, this is his biggest jump up in competition. He is merely 13 and 0. Our rules, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight is official after four rounds have been completed. And here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Good evening to you and welcome to the Chelsea inside the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming your way, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime. Our opening attraction is a world title attraction sanctioned by the IBF, the President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor Levi Martinez. Judging at ringside, we have from California, Max DeLuca. From Oklahoma, David Sutherland, and from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Jack Reese. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Buenos Aires, Argentina. He weighed in at 114 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 13 wins, no losses. Eight wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making his U.S. debut and his first attempt at a world title. Here is the undefeated IBF number four ranked contender introducing Fernando Puma Martinez. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, hailing from Lourdes Dancagan Burkidnon in the Philippines. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 114 and one half pounds. His record stands at 33 wins, one loss and two draws, with 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the longtime world champion tonight making his Las Vegas debut and the 10th defense of his title, introducing the reigning IBF junior bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Jerwin, pretty boy Eric, on Kaha. So high. I'm let him work on him. It's Once again, a referee in charge now to give instructions, Jack Reese. Fernando, aqui, por favor. Okay, come here. This is a little high. Hold on. Right here. Sure, let me see. Okay. I told you guys in the dressing room, both trunks are just a little bit high. I'm going to let everybody work right in here. Prestame atención, protecate en todo momento, pelea duro, pelea limpio. Please listen and follow my instructions. Uh, protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. All right, it is our opening matchup, Jerwin and Cajas. The champion, the IBF Junior Bantamweight champion of the world. The second longest champion in boxing from a male perspective. Fernando Martinez, you heard the ovation from this Argentinian contingency here in Las Vegas. And you have to go back to 2014 in May and September when Argentinian his the man that he looks up to in Marcos Maidana challenged Floyd Mayweather not once but twice. Right down the street at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Maidana here to support Fernando Martinez. I believe he is a part of the managerial team for the 30 year old. Martinez turned pro at 26 years of age in his fourth fight. He had a 10 round fight so they have moved him along rather quickly. Sherwin in Cajas who is looking to make Double digit title defenses, which doesn't matter who you're against. There's a nice left hook there by Martinez. He throws the right over the top. And Cajas is a softball. There's a left hook that grazed in Cajas. Scheduled for 12. There's a left uppercut by Martinez. Martinez has the blue hair, a little bit of blue hair. That is a tribute to his home country of Argentina. 
Martinez staying in the pocket early. There's a left hook by Martinez. It's un interesting to me that as you look at them, they're both 30 years of age, but Incaz has such a lengthy resume. And Joe Incaz unbeaten for nearly 10 years as a professional. He has been a pro for nearly 13 years as Jerwin in Kaz. Kaz said one of his dreams is to fight Srixek Sarungi Sai. Stop! And a minute Stop. 10 left separate. here in this first round. Jack Reese will separate them. There's a left hook by Martinez. Martinez being quite active here in this first round against Encajas. He's got to be careful, and Encajas does have power. 22 of his 33 wins have come by knockout. He has a knockout percentage of 61%. There's a left hook upstairs by Martinez. Sweeping right cross that missed by Martinez. German and Cajas. Under the guidance of MP Promotions, Manny Pacquiao, the retired eight division world champion in Manny Pacquiao. Senator from Serengani Province and who is hoping to become president of the Philippines later this year. There's a straight left down the middle by Encanas. Encanas nickname is Pretty Boy. And that ends round number one. So far, it was a solid first round for Fernando Martinez. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa. Uh, Thank you. I got it. Thank you. So that, as we get set for the second round, Jerwin Kaz coming off of a win over Jonathan Rodriguez by unanimous decision back on April 10th of last year. Fernando Martinez coming off of a TKO win in the fourth round over Gonzalo Garcia. That was back on August 13th of 2021. On to the second round. This one's scheduled for 12. As Martinez coming out looking to set the tone here in the second round. There's a counter left by Encajas. There's a right hook by Encajas. As Martinez threw a left hook. Martinez not shy whatsoever. He's looking to push the pace here. Try to make Joanne Cajas uncomfortable. Cajas, 219 rounds to his credit as a professional. For Fernando Martinez, just 68. So over quadruple the amount of rounds Joanne Cajas has over his adversary tonight, Fernando Martinez. There's a left hook to the body by Martinez. Martinez is expending a lot of energy. There's a right hook, beautiful right hook by Encaz. But back comes Martinez. Martinez throws a overhand right. I'm surprised Encaz isn't using his jab more. He seems to be very much of the belief to counter and bang away with Fernando Martinez, sensing the fact that Martinez may not have the, the pedigree and the experience to be able to last with him at this rate. It is a 12 round fight. Oh. 
Jack Reese warning Nkaz about grabbing the head. There's a beautiful right hook counter by Nkaz. Nkaz looking to settle into his rhythm. Now you see him using his jab a little bit more. There's a right hook to the body by Nkaz. Counter right hand though by Martinez. Straight left that misses by Nkahas. <laughs> Final 20 seconds of the second. There's a counter uppercut by Nkahas. <laughs> Final moments of the second. Stop Take a look at some of the action. There's that right hand blasting in Kaz, followed by a left. Here's some body work by both men as they were both pounding away on the bodies of one another. Round number three, this one scheduled for 12. There's a right hook to the body. And right away, we are starting off strong here in this third round. There's a left hook upstairs by Martinez. Martinez starting off strong. We'll see if Ancaz can adjust. Martinez seems to be the fresh of the two. There's a left hook by Martinez. Ancaz is getting driven back here by Martinez. There's a right upstairs. Martinez hustling here, but back comes Ancaz. There's a left hook connecting on Ancaz, followed by a right. And the Argentinian fans voicing their pleasure, but unloading a four-punch combination was in Cajas. Boy, these guys are fun to watch. There's a chopping right hand by Martinez. There's a right hook to the body by Encas. Surprised Encas isn't trying to cut away the mobility of Martinez and attack the body of the 30-year-old Argentinian because you want to put him in these precarious oh, positions that he's not stop, 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 used to stop, oh, oh, me. and stop, accustomed to. Right? I believe it was a potential clash of heads. As we are approaching the one minute mark. In the third round. Look at this. Under 30 seconds to go. Fernando Martinez looking solid. Sherwin Nkaz, the Filipino. He is promotional stable mates with Mark Maxaya, who just picked up the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World over Gary Russell Jr. last month in Atlantic City. 
Oh, there's a left that buckled the knees of his adversary. And look at that. Fernando Martinez was wobbled. What? Uh, well, it's the end of the round. Man. Taking a look at some of the seesaw action. Good body work, but there's that left hook, and you saw Martinez unloading on Encajas. And here is that shot, boom, there was a straight left, and it buckled the knees of Martinez, and Martinez had to spit out some snot from his uh, right nostril. Fernando, four. We are on to round number four. This one is scheduled for 12. The IBF Junior Bantamweight crown on the line between the champion, German and Cajas, and the challenger, Fernando Martinez. There's a left hook by Martinez, trying to create some space with a little bit of a shoulder bump was in Cajas. Sherwin and Cajas, a nine fight win streak, or has made nine successful title defenses. He is the second longest reigning male champion in boxing today. He captured the title back on September 3rd. 2016, a unanimous decision win over McJoel Arroyo, who was undefeated at the time. There's a left hook there by Martinez as he's chasing Cajas around the ring. Hey, Jay, go to replay. I think it was a punch. Okay, so Jack Reese telling the commission he needs to go back and give instant replay to Jay Nady, the replay official, because he believes that the cut that has been, that is outside the left eye of Fernando Martinez was caused because of a punch. There is replay review here in Las Vegas that Jay Nady will have the ability to do so. Fernando Martinez ranked number four in the world by the IBF rankings. His manager and promoter is Marcos Maidana, the former world champion. It's so interesting that both men are promoted by former welterweight greats and Kaz promoted by Manny Pacquiao. For Martinez, he's promoted by Marcos Maidana, who's still beloved in his native home country of Argentina for his aggressive come forward style. Under 30 seconds to go here in the fourth. Martinez coming forward, and he just ate a big left from Encajas. There was a left hook there that connected for Martinez. And Martinez not to be denied here. But a right hook to the body by Encajas. I love the seesaw action between these two, and Encajas seems to be more than willing to engage in this close proximity sort of back and forth toe-to-toe -to -toe seesaw affair. We're heading to the fifth. Okay. Jeff, I got a cut. Is it a punch? Okay. I push it. Oh. Holy. Can you really go? I say it's a punch. Here's where the cut happened. Okay, so I think that was a clash of heads. Jack Reese right believes here. it was. Let's see what the it's call is. I'm listening. Punch. It's a fizz. Okay, you got it. Okay, so the commission has now confirmed that okay. it is not caused from, from a punch. A it is from a headbutt. So because of the fact that over four rounds have been completed, a, in case of the fact 
that accidental butt. Okay? Let me number five. Step back. Five. All right, we are on to round number five. Okay, so that's significant in this sense. Because if somehow Fernando Martinez cannot continue, then we will go to the scorecards. So, in case of an accidental foul or injury, if four rounds have been completed, we go to the scorecard. So we're already past that four round mark. So this, every round, I mean, it's always significant, but even more so now. There's a nice combination there by Martinez. Martinez coming out swinging wildly, connects with the sneaky left uppercut. Throws almost like in a tornado-like fashion does Fernando Martinez. There's a straight left by Encajas. Left hook upstairs by Martinez. And digging deepest, Martinez, he is coming with these sort of whirlwind left and right hooks. And then following a straight right, Marcos Maidana just threw down his water bottle as the same throw straighter punches. There's a left hook by Martinez. A right hook to the body. Oh my goodness, I felt that here at ringside. Just over the halfway point of the fifth round between German and Kaz, the champion, and Fernando Martinez, ranked number four in the world here by the IBF. This is Martinez's first professional fight here stateside. Under a minute to go here in the fifth. There's a left by Encajas. Stepping in, lunging with the left was Martinez. And still to come later tonight, it'll be Chris Colbert matching up against Hector Garcia. There's a left hook there by Martinez. Two big left hooks there by the Argentinian. But back comes Encajas, the Filipino. Oh, this is some fun stuff that we are watching here at the Cosmo as the action is intensifying. Blood streaming outside of the left eye of Fernando Martinez and Kaz eating some big shots, but continues to try to hold on to his championship. Chris Colbert getting ready for his main event matchup against Hector Garcia. He's standing by with Jim Gray. Uh, Chris, you were supposed to fight Gutierrez for the title. He had to pull out because of COVID. Uh, how difficult was the mental adjustment for you to not fight for a title? I mean, to be honest, God gonna put um, roadblocks in the way and you just gonna have to roll with it. You gonna have to Pulling. overcome that and move on. And that's what I did, to be honest. Hector Garcia takes this on three weeks notice. What do you know about him and did you study some tape? Uh, I know he got uh, two legs, two arms and a head to hit. And I won't be missing much tonight. <laughs> got a small cut. <laughs> Their head. So did you study the tape nah. to figure out how to hit that hit? Nah, I don't. I don't study. It. We got 12 rounds, and my my middle name is Adapter, so it, it only take me one or two, and I adapt. Prime time and Adapter. Yes, got sir. all the names. All right. It got good. all the answers. It sounds good, right? All right. Best of luck, Chris. We'll talk to you afterwards. Thank you. All right. Back out to you, Marl. Chris is known as the as Prime Time and the Adapter. Well, German and Kaz is going to have to adapt here against. Fernando Martinez, total power punches, landed thrown through five. And Cajas, 62 of 205 for a 30% connect percentage. Martinez has doubled that. He's 126 of 293 for a 43% connect percentage. He has thrown more power punches, doubled the punt power punch output, and is landing at a significant higher connect percentage. But he just ate some big shots by Encajas. The key is for Martinez is will he slow down? And these are the early rounds in the first half of the fight. And Cajas is used to being into these big fights, but man, is he teeing off on Cajas. Going downstairs to the body is Martinez. I'll say this, that Martinez is probably throwing at least double the amount 
than that of Encajas. He's a lot faster to the draw, he's throwing quicker, he's landing and he's resetting to be able to try to continue his offensive output upon Jerwin Encajas. As a minute plus has elapsed in the sixth. Here's a left hook by Martinez. Martinez would love nothing more than to make his promoter and manager, Marcos Maidana, proud. His family and friends in Argentina as well. They would be absolutely in a state of elation. There's a left hook, sneaky left hook. That got through the guard of Encajas. Encajas stabs him with the right hook to the body to Martinez. But Martinez looking to get that back. But he ate a straight left. He got momentarily wobbled. And I wonder if Encajas feels like he had Martinez hurt. Or was Martinez just off balance in that particular situation? 60 seconds left here in the sixth. There's a right hook upstairs by Encajas. Left hook to the body by Martinez. Couple of uppercuts. Followed by a chopping right hand. Look at this. Two big left hooks by Martinez. Another one just left hook in abundance as he presses and drives in Cajas back. And Cajas going backwards. Martinez sensing that the end could be near. Can he finish off the champion? But back comes in Cajas with a couple of straight lefts of his own. The champion not going to go away that easy. What a fight here through six. Big left hook. Look at that combination by Martinez. But back comes in Cajas. If you love toe-to-toe -to -toe combat, then by all means, this is the destination for you. What a fight through six. And no, that was the right glove of Fernando Martinez did not touch and he waved it as to say, no problem, we're good. It was a right. How's he doing? How's he doing? And the glove uh, did not touch. Great balance by Fernando Martinez. A look at this back and forth. They just went, are continuing to go right after each other. Let's go! We are on to the second half of the fight. Total punches landed, thrown through six in Cajas, 94 of 419 for a 22% connect percentage. Martinez, the challenger, 168 of 465 for a 36% connect percentage. So it is Martinez who is landing more and throwing more and has the higher connect percentage compared to that of Encajas. We'll see if Encajas can make adjustments. Power punches landed, thrown through five rounds. Encajas, 62 of 205. Martinez, 126 of 293 for a 43% connect percentage. Now, that was thrown through five. We are now into the seventh round. There's a right that connected by Martinez. Another right hand down the middle. But back comes Encajas. Encajas looking to dig to the body of Martinez. Martinez, oh, there's a big right hand that momentarily stopped in Cajas in his tracks. And it would appear as if that left eye has been taken care of from a bleeding perspective. Terrific fight here. Martinez looking to come forward and he throws a right, a right hook on the left cheek of Encajas. 75 seconds to go here in the seventh. There's a left hook to the body, some 
Blows by Martinez to Encajas. Martinez still pressing the issue. There's a left hook. And Goss is going to have to do something significant at some point because he is not doing anything to deter the forward pressure of Fernando Martinez, who is young, hungry, determined, and looking to make his dream become a reality. There's a right hook to the body by Encajas. What an excellent fight. And this is why, one of the many reasons why I enjoy the lighter weight classes because they do stuff like this. Look at the pace. And they continue to slug away in the center of the ring here in Las Vegas. To the eighth we go. continue to hammer away upon each other. They're both going to be extremely sore in the morning. Number eight, stay back, stay back. Numero ocho, ocho. Round number eight, this one is scheduled for 12. Joe and Cajas, the IBF junior bantamweight champion of the world, second longest champion in boxing. Total power punches landed, thrown through seven. And Cajas, 96 of 312 for 830% connect percentage. Martinez, take a look at these numbers. 201 of 447 for a 44% connect percentage. Martinez is nearly landing at a 50% clip percentage, or close to it, 44%, but I round up a little bit. That is just tremendous numbers that really bounce off the page. And sometimes numbers can be deceiving, but in this particular fight, they are telling the story. Jack Reese telling Martinez to keep his punches up. If you're in Kaz, though, your reign as champion is very much up for grabs. He has been a champion since that of September 3rd, 2016. So over five and a half years as a champion. He is looking to make his 10th successful title defense, but he has certainly run into a very impassioned Fernando Martinez, the 30-year-old from Argentina. But in Kaz having a solid round here in the eighth. Well, we'll see if Martinez can keep up this work rate and this fervor as we head into the championship rounds. And Cajas just went the distance against Jonathan Rodriguez last April. 12-round decision. Back comes Martinez. Unloading a machine gun-like burst upon Encajas. Under a minute to go here in the eighth. Beautiful jumping left uppercut by Martinez. What a fight so far. So right hook upstairs by Martinez. Martinez digging deep, but again, Martinez is the quicker, more athletic. He's the faster, he's the one that is throwing more punches, and Encajas just seems to have his feet stuck in the canvas and isn't moving with as much fluidity as that of his challenger in Fernando Martinez. Final moments of the eighth. 
And Koss with a big right hook, though, to end the eighth. And Koss looking to dig deep. He knows he needs something significant. On to the ninth. Take a look at some of this action. There's a left uppercut by Martinez. And a beautiful left uppercut there by Fernando Martinez. We are on our way. Nine. As we approach round number nine. About eight punches landed thrown in Kaz. 16 of 75 for a 21% connect percentage. Martinez, 49 of 102 for a 48% connect percentage. So he's landing nearly 50% of his punches. Big right hand connecting, smashing right into the left side of the face of the champion, Jordan Kaz. In Kaz, I believe he's got a little bit of a. I thought he had a cut on his left cheek. Right. So unofficial ringside observers have Martinez ahead four rounds against Germany Kahn. So this is the point if that is the case. And Kahn is going to have to win the next four rounds to at least potentially, at least in the eyes of ringside observers that are not judges. Look at this combination by Martinez. Oh my goodness. This is sensational, scintillating stuff that we're seeing from the Argentinian contender. The way that he throws, he is just at this feverish pace and he pushes down in Cajas, but that was obviously inadvertent. Round nine, as we are approaching the midway portion of the ninth. Nikaz just took a big deep breath and he just ate a three punch combination from Fernando Martinez. It was punctuated by a straight right. And look at him just continue to swarm in Cajas, hammering him with punches from a bevy of angles. There's a right followed by a left hook. He gets out of the way. It is calculated aggression, but he swarms in Cajas in spurts. Headshots landed 259 for Martinez compared to the, just that of 82 for Encajas. Encajas' his head is snapping back like a Pez dispenser. You're probably wondering what that is. It used to be a, a candy toy that used to pop the head back and get some candy. And right now, Martinez is looking to not get candy, but looking to put gold around his waist by popping back the head of Encajas all night long, which he's been successful in the process. Martinez just continues to unload. Look at that four or five punch combination. Oh my, he is like a whirlwind. And I think this is the first time he's fighting here in the United States as a pro. We need to see more of Fernando Martinez and at performances like this, we absolutely will. Unless Argentina says, no, 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 let's pack a stadium with you for 20,000 people. But he's still got three rounds to go. German Kaz, though the champion, in some significant trouble. You want to take a look at calculated aggression? Look at this example from Fernando Martinez. Sitting back, hammering away, left hooks, right hooks. Moving, eating a big shot from Encaja, staying in the pocket, ripping to the body. Pressing the issue, being more physical than that of Encajas. Fun stuff to watch. 
A ver, vamos, vamos que falta poquitito para la gloria. Pensá en la gloria, pensá en la gloria, en la gloria que luchaste toda la vida para esto. ¿Eh? Para toda la vida. ¿Cómo está el pibe? ¿Cómo está? Yo tú ahí lanzaba, yo pego, yo pego. Hey, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. Go over there. Time is being called. You, get him dry, get him dry. And then the ring too. And don't let them wet him like that on the way out. His back, his back, please, Mallory. All right, stay there. Get, up, get over there, get over there, stay there. Stay there, stay there. Time in. Now round number 10, and as soon as they call time, Fernando Martinez goes right back on the attack. He is a man possessed. And here's my big right that wobbled in Cajas. But in Cajas threw a left of his own. And Cajas shaking his head as to say, okay, I'm all right. When Cajas needs a big shot here, he has a 61% knockout percentage. You would think that he has three rounds left in order to do something significant in order to deter the challenger in Fernando Martinez. Stop, 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 stop. Keep shot below the belt. Time, out. Time being called. We're just a little low, a little low. You all right? Time in. And back we go. And right away, you know what the MO is for Fernando Martinez going right after Germany Cajas. He just is on him and pressing the issue, trying not to give him any ounce to be able to even breathe. There's a beautiful shot that they both unloaded. Heavy artillery being thrown between both combatants here in Las Vegas. And Cajas, the fact that he's eaten so many big shots and continues to try to hold on to his championship. But they say that sometimes guys, especially in the lighter weight classes, that they could get old overnight. And I'm not saying that Encajas isn't giving a great effort, but he does seem to be a step slow compared to what we are used to. And it could be the fact of the pressure of Fernando Martinez is disrupting the rhythm and the ability of Germany Encajas to get into his flow and execute his game plan. Big right hand driving back Encajas. I cannot believe how this guy's still standing, but there's a left from Encajas. The Filipino. I'm curious to see if there's a sense of urgency in the corner of the champion as we are approaching the championship rounds. There's a nice combination of the body by Encajas, but look at Encajas, there's Mbamboy on the head of Encajas, but back comes the champion. This is just tremendous back and forth slugging between these two. Well, you know that they say, you know we don't have, I mean, in the NBA they say, and in basketball, shoot or shoot, well, slug or slug. And that's exactly what Fernando Martinez is doing. He is slugging and he is bringing it to German and Cajas. And in Cajas is trying to slug away, but the fresher of the two seems to be Fernando Martinez. Two more rounds remaining. There is some of the action. Just sit back and admire this. Look at this. The fact that these guys, this is why they train eight to 10 weeks to prepare to go at this frenetic pace. It's a little bit of a low blow. Continuing to look at just the action here, and in Ka's face swollen. No, we're done. Number, number 11. 11. On say, on say. We are now on to the championship rounds between Germany Cajas and Fernando Martinez. 
Martinez, you would figure, has a sizable lead coming into these final two rounds. Can he keep up the pace and stay away from danger? And Cajas has a 61% connect percentage. The last time he picked up a stoppage victory was back on that of December 7, 2019. A six-round TKO win over Miguel Gonzalez. That was in Mexico. And look at Martinez just go. He's still hammering away upon Joe and Cajas. Martinez looking for the finish. And Cajas trying to unload that big straight left. And Cajas is going to need something significant. A come from behind win is exactly what he needs. He needs a knockdown at least to try to sort of cut into the lead of the challenger, Fernando Martinez, and just continuing to pound away on the skull of German and Cajas as Fernando Martinez. It is just target practice, and, and Cajas is letting his hands go as well, but it is, I mean, we are in a gambling city here in Las Vegas. It's like being the riverboat gambling mentality. You're gonna have to gamble quite a bit. High risk, high reward. And both men have been doing that all night long. Fernando Martinez, though, is on the verge of having the biggest reward possible if he's successful tonight and upsets and dethrones the second longest champion in boxing in Jerwin and Cajas. Final minute of what has been a tremendously action-packed 11th round. They're telling Martinez one minute to go here in the 11th, wanting him to be cognizant of the time inside the ring. I think Martinez would fight 10 minute rounds if you gave him the opportunity. Look at this, they just continue to pound away upon one another. The amount of punishment that both men have been dishing out to one another is why these gentlemen are such gladiators and world-class prize fighters because of what they are doing inside this ring. And yes, Fernando Martinez likely ahead by a significant margin on the scorecards, but Jerwin Cajas, the proud champion that he is, has not gone down without a fight. Final moments of the 11th. Cerrate, cerrate, Fer, pegá y cerrate, pegá y cerrate. Está hecho mierda, no ve un ojo, hinchaste un ojo. ¿Estamos? Es que le metes, le entra, no ve ese ojo. Escuchá. Escuchate, Fer, no tenemos, no tenemos. Este es el round. ¿Eh? Cumplí el sueño tuyo. Ah, 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 Nagaantay yung pamilya mo win, ha? Nagaantay pamilya mo yung anak mo, si Kira. Ha? Ha? Kung bahawin, ha? Twelfth and final round we go between Joan and Cajas. And Fernando Martinez, total body shots landed through 11. And Caja, 60 body shots landed. Martinez, just 33. Why? Because he has been a man searching for the head of Drogon and Cajas. And immediately, Martinez continues this tremendous pace as he is pressing the issue, and he's done that all night long. When I mean, he did in the first three or four rounds, I said, okay, I'm curious to see if he can hold up and do that through the 12th. Well, he has answered the question unequivocally. Good body work by Martinez, but he's typically been looking for the head and the jaw and the chin and the cheek of Germany Kahas. Jerwin and Cajas, his championship reign of over five and a half years hangs in the balance. Being nearly undefeated for 10 years, that hangs in the balance. That would go by the wayside along, and most importantly, 
his IBM Junior Bantamweight Championship and the opportunity that he was hoping for to sort of unify the division against Kazuto Ioka, the WBO Super Flyweight Champion. But what a deep division, what an exciting division, and what a division with guys who just want to get after it and challenge each other to determine who is the best at 115. And right now, Fernando Martinez has infused some youth and some new blood into the super flyweight division or junior bantamweight division, whichever one you want to call it. Joe Rincajas, you would figure, stands as the old guard. And Fernando Martinez is trying to say, not so fast. There is a new young man in town, and he's from Argentina. And he continues to hammer away upon German and Cajas, but in Cajas being the proud and honorable champion that he is, still trying to get that home run shot. He's got 51 seconds to land something significant. Otherwise, the championship reign would be in the books. Look at this, they continue to go back and forth. It is a war of attrition. It is a battle of wills. It is a fight to see who is going to take home championship gold to their native country. And Kaz going back to the Philippines. Martinez going back to Argentina with his promoter and manager, Marcos Maidana, the Argentinian great, looking on. Will this be the moment for Fernando Martinez? Or will Joan and Carlos find a way to hold on to the championship? What a fight, what a moment. But a new championship reign could be on the horizon, and his name is Fernando Martinez. Thanks, Dave. Beautiful, beautiful Thanks, slugging and action between these two. We were treated to something very special. I don't think I can curtail the heart and the will and the desire of German and Cajas. But you couple that and you look at Fernando Martinez, who came out just with this will, like he was not going to be denied on this night. Total punches landed, thrown in the fight. And Cajas, the champion, 192 of 816. Martinez, 427 of 1,046 for a connect percentage of 40%. They threw over 1,800 punches combined, and that's just unbelievable. They landed, they landed just these numbers. They literally bounce off the page. They landed over 600 punches. They threw over 1,800 punches. Unbelievable that what we have witnessed talk about, and the fact is, is that, I'll be honest with you, neither man is going to be the same after this. Even though Martinez may take home the victory, I don't feel like neither man is gonna be the same because of the kind of physicality and the damage that they did to each other. Curious to see what how the judges have this one rendered, but I think it is Martinez's fight, and I think Encajas knows it. And here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it all official. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge ringside, Max DeLuca, scores about 117 to 111. Judges David Sutherland and Steve Weisfeld both score about 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner and the new IBF Junior Battlemite Champion of the World.
Juan Fernando Puma Martinez. The Argentinian contingency, they are in a state of adulation as Fernando Martinez accomplishes a lifelong dream and becomes a world champion, overwhelmed by emotion as he is embraced by Marcos Maidan and his entire team. This is such a special moment for the 30-year-old in Fernando Martinez, a moment he dreamed about, a moment he envisioned. And for German and Kaz, nothing to be ashamed about. Here a scorecard, Steve Weisfeld, 118, 110. Max DeLuca, 117, 111. David Sutherland, 118, 110. For Martinez, the judges got it right. And now, Fernando Martinez standing by with Jim Gray. Sir, Jim, Demis is training, he's training. I understand. Okay. All right, a lot of excitement here. Fernando. Felix will translate for us. Congratulations, this has got to be quite a moment for you. Tiene que ser un momento excepcional para ti en estos momentos. Gracias. Gracias a toda la gente que me apoyó. Gracias a mi novia, que sin esto no lo pude haber logrado, que me cocinó, me cuidó. Para mi hija Alma, para el hermanito Luchi, para mi mamá, para mi papá, para el equipo que tengo, Chino Mayana Promos. Mi profesor, los amo con todo mi corazón. A toda la gente de Formosa, el hospital Mariano, el Arquerich. He is really thanking everybody. He's very emotional in this moment. Everybody from his mother, from his kids, to his father, which was especially big for him. Uh, this moment is so special for him. He's thanked the hospital too, Sylvia too, everybody that uh, has helped him. Your, your father, Padre, Abel predicted this for you. And he's not here to celebrate with you. And I know how emotional that is for you. Uh, what does it mean? to you to know that he knew. Tu papá siempre ha dicho que tú ibas a ser campeón. No está aquí en estos momentos para celebrar contigo. ¿Qué significa eso para ti? No tengo palabras porque yo quisiera haberlo tenido acá que me vea. Que le cumplió el sueño. Voy a ayudarle a mi mamá a comprar su casa. Los amo a toda la gente, a toda la gente que me apoyó, que me aguantó, a la gente de Sonra. La verdad que lo quiero, lo quiero a todos. Muchísimas gracias. Ah, ah, como eh, Showtan, eh, PBC, por darme la oportunidad de pelear en el sueño de acá, de estar en Las Vegas. Soy, dijeron que, dijeron que, soy, que hay número cuatro, cuatro campeones que se hicieron campeón acá en Las Vegas. Yo soy el número quinto. Yeah, I'm the fifth champion uh, of the zone where I live here. And what you mentioned about my father, I mean, it hurts so much that my father's not here for this great moment in my life, but uh, I know he's, he oversaw this. Also, um, I'm just extremely happy for my corner, for everybody that supported me through the years, especially Argentina. Congratulations to you. It's a wonderful moment. Muchísimas gracias, le agradezco con todo el corazón. Es un muy es un placer enorme haberlo conocido a todos ustedes. La verdad que son un trabajo profesional y así hay que trabajar en todos los países, en mi país. Lamentablemente sacrifica, hay que laburar para poder entrenar. Yeah, no, definitely uh, uh, the way you guys handle it here, everybody here from Showtime professionally giving me uh, a nice uh, warm welcome here for my victory. I want to thank everybody that also supported. Thank you. Le quiero agradecer a Ancaja por haberme dado la oportunidad de pelear con él. La verdad que fue un muy buen boxeador, una muy buena. He wants to thank you for giving him the opportunity. A Dr. Boa will uh, translate for us. Tenemos chocolatito. Excited, Jim. Okay. Um, how would you describe this fight? First of all, I like to thank everybody. Sa promoter po sa PBC na binigyan ako ng pagkakataon dito sa sa Las Vegas na lumaban at ito yung pinaka bisakin na pangarap ko at ah uh, para ngayon ngayon po ah. Uh, uh, ano po ako, uh, parang masaya po ako na nakalaban si Martin Lewis na isang uh, Olympian, magaling na boxingero at uh, 
proud ako sa nakalaban ko, uh, magaling mahirap na kalaban ko. First of all, I'd like to thank the PBC promotion for um, giving me the chance to fight in Las Vegas. And I'm so thankful for Team Martinez for giving me the opportunity to, to make this fight. You have the ability to invoke a rematch. Will you do that? If you have the opportunity to give this rematch, will you do it? Opo, at uh, kung sakali po maglaban kami ulit at ganun yung mas uh, gagalingan ko pa po well, kasi alam ko na magaling si Martinez at pero sa sunod na laban, uh, Chuck na na gagawin namin yung lahat para makuha uli yung Chuck. Yes, I'll do it, but I'll do everything next time to achieve my goal. Final thought, what, what does he think was the difference in this fight? Uh, he connected on 427 punches and threw 1,046, so it was just a constant onslaught. What did he think was the difference? Unsay pangita ni Musa, unsay tanaw ni Musa, depreren siya sa fight, he threw more punches. Nakita natin yung ano, no, uh, kung gaano ka determinado si Martinez sa laban ngayon, at uh, pinakita niya kung ano ang challenger at uh, sa ngayon na na decision po uh, ngayon na laban na uh, marami ako natutunan sa laban na to. Uh, he learned a lot on this fight. He's a good challenger and um, he learned a lot. Thank you. Great fight. Tremendous champ.